Hello, hello. We are going to talk about using boom cards in Spanish class, and I did something a little different today. We are going to use slides. <laughs> so, uh, the reason why is because I wanted to show you some of the things that you can do with boom cards and how you can use them and all that sort of stuff. So, let's first talk about like, what are boom cards in case you're not familiar with them or if you hadn't heard of them before. Boom cards are digital interactive test cards and uh, it's a website. You send your kids to the website, they do the things on the website. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what are the things that they can do and that sort of stuff. But I just wanted to give you like the basic is they are digital interactive task cards that they can do different stuff with. So why would you try them? You can easily differentiate. So I could send this student this link and this student that link and like maybe those five students this link, depending on what they need to practice. They get immediate feedback because they're self-correcting. So you get a report right away or you just like see their total depending on which kind of um, membership you've chosen. But the students immediately get feedback. So as they click, it's going to say like, yes, or like, whoops, <laughs> like, you did that wrong. Or if you're doing one of the digital manipulatives, if they drag it to the wrong spot, it's going to go Whoop, and it'll go back and they know right away, like, did I do this right or not? Uh, they're multi-use. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but you could use them one-on-one. -on -one. You can use them as a whole class. You can use them as small groups, as stations. We'll talk about that more later, but you can get a lot of use out of them in different ways. What do you need to do them? A computer, tablet, phone, something, like some sort of device that connects to the internet. The browser on that device has to be up to date. Like it can't be, I think it has to be up to date within the last three years. It can't be something from like 20 years ago. <laughs> Okay. Um, and then you need a Boom Cards account. And it can be a free account or it can be a paid account, but you do have to have an account to be able to send links to your students. Um, when you talk about like a free or paid account, I, I can go into it a little bit more, but basically Boom is like a freemium account. So you can have a free account and you can send your students stuff and like that sort of thing. Or you can have a premium account where you pay and then they give you more features and that sort of stuff. That's obviously totally up to you. The free account is just fine. <laughs> I've done either. So, you know, that sort of thing. You don't have to have a paid account in order to be able to use Boom Cards. All right. So now that you kind of have like the basics about what they are, why they're helpful and what you need to them, need to be able to use them. I wanted to give you kind of like a quick sample of what you can do with them because they're really flexible. So first example that I have for you and they're not in order, unfortunately, is just multiple choice. <laughs> so this example is from my Hispanic Heritage deck that's like a trivia set. So they get a picture and then they just choose the, the correct answer from the multiple choice. And the nice thing is, is when you set these up, Boom will automatically like shuffle those answers around. So like right now you can see the four options. The next time the students open that deck, those four options aren't going to be in the same order. So they can't just like memorize them. <laughs> okay, so one is multiple choice with just text answers. Another thing that you can do with them is multiple choice, but with pictures. So in this example, this is from my Jugari Los Deportes set. They listen to something that's happening, and then they're going to pick the picture that matches. So it's multiple choice again, but they're choosing images. And this is really helpful for like if you're doing clothing. Well, <laughs> It's really helpful for a lot of things. You, I'm sure you can imagine, you know, if you're doing clothing or if you're choosing, like you've described a scene and I have to pick the right scene. There's a ton of things you can do with the multiple choice pictures. And just like I was saying with the other one, it'll shuffle those choices around. So if they get this card again in the future, if they're doing this set again, it's not gonna be right in the same order, okay? And you can see from this picture in comparison to the last picture, you don't have to just do four. This one has, what, six options? You can do as many or as few options as you want when you're setting up multiple choice. So that's kind of nice too. Okay, here's another option for you. This is kind of like the multiple choice thing, but not really. So you can give them more than you might usually do with just like, I don't know, any, any other site. So in this example, this is from my Ropa, La Ropa clothing set. They read this little paragraph and they're like packing for a trip. So the kids read the paragraph and then according to the information in the paragraph, they're going to move the clothes into the suitcase. So they'll tap the clothes with their finger or with their cursor and just 
pop them right in. And like I was saying, they're auto-correcting their like self-grading instant feedback. So if a kid puts like nine, all nine clothing items in there and they check it, it's going to say, nope, because not all of those things are needed. So that's an example of how you can use them for like manipulatives and for like a little bit more reading. Let's look at, this is kind of another simple option for you. You could have them do this as a fill in the blank. So instead of having them like drag the pieces in, you could have them just like have that fill in the blank and just type their answer instead. Okay. <laughs> You're going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's really a lot of ways you can do this. Let's look at the other thing. I don't know if you noticed when I... Oh, okay, sorry. I just like paused weird. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I showed you this example before, but there's like a little speaker icon. You can put in audio clips and they can listen to you or you know listen to whoever made the deck and then they answer things based on what they hear so in this example they're listening to the person who's described and they're going to click on the person here's another example with an audio where they listen to a question and then they look at the pictures in the calendar and they have to write a sentence based on what the question was asking and the information in the calendar so like <laughs> Like I said, there's a lot of ways you can kind of like use these to practice language skills. And hopefully as you're watching this, you're like, oh, I could do this or I could do this or I could do this. This particular example is from my era infinitive set. So they're listening to the calendar and the, um, the question and the question is saying, oh, what are you going to do on Friday? And so the kids will look at the picture and all those little speakers underneath are in case just in case the picture isn't clear enough for them, they can listen to the audio and it'll clarify what the picture is supposed to be of for their infinitive, just in case. Then another option. <laughs> so a lot of those are like really vocabulary and grammar heavy, but you can do them. You're not limited to just practicing vocab and grammar skills. So this example is from a story that I've written. And the, the focus of the story is telling time and like school supplies. So they read the story and there's a speaker. You can see in the top left corner there, there's a little speaker. They can listen and like follow along. And there's two versions of each of the stories when I do them with my students. They can either just do the story or I have another version that's like a story. And then after each question or after each like page of the story, there's some comprehension questions so you can really check for their understanding. Uh, question really quick, it says, is it possible to make the students listen to a question and then they can record their answers as speaking activity? Unfortunately not. There's no speaking like a recording function involved. These are really useful for reading, writing, and listening, but it does not hit that fourth skill, unfortunately. You could Hold on, processing through an option. <laughs> you could, as kind of like an extension activity, you could build a deck and have them like screencast using Loom or, you know, any free app for them to be able to record and just talk over. That could be a good way to like extend it, but you wouldn't have to use Boom for that. You could do that with like slides or, I don't know, any tool where they create a project. <laughs> so Boom wouldn't be my first choice for something like that. Okay. One other option I wanted to show you, so this was a reading example where they take like a short story and then they like will answer comprehension questions with it. I also will sometimes use it for culture. So in this example, this is from La Tomatina. The students are, again, they're reading and they're listening, but there's some more pictures to kind of support them because especially with novices, they might need a little bit more support. So for this example, they're just learning about La Tomatina. And then at the end, instead of doing like reading question, reading question, once they get all the way to the end, there's some comprehension activities to say, okay, you read all this information and you heard all this information about this celebration. What did you get from it? And you can kind of check their understanding of the festival afterwards. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to check and see, did I miss any other questions? I know I answered that question about speaking skills. If you have questions while you're watching, feel free to drop them below so I can just help you understand and hopefully help you get some ideas for different ways you can use this tool in your classroom. If you haven't encountered it before, or you know maybe you have and you just haven't seen that this is an option for you, I wanted to make sure you knew that I have a set for you to try if you want, and it's perfect for this time of year. It's all in Cognates. So if like, <laughs> if you have to be gone for a day or <laughs> something like that, this would be a really easy sub plan for you. You would just send them the fast pin and your students click on it and it pulls them right in. 
Um, I will put the link to this deck in the description of this video. So if you're watching the replay, you'll tap the screen and then you'll tap up in the top left corner where the title of the video is and the caption will drop down. You'll just click the link that says um, like Cognates. <laughs> That's because that's the name of this deck. So that's an example for you to be able to try one of your own. You can make your own decks. You can use decks other people have made and you can purchase decks. So there's a, quite a few different options for you when it comes to using them. If you are making your own and you're feeling kind of overwhelmed, I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel and one in my free resource library that's a little bit more in depth. So if you are on my email <laughs> newsletter and you get little notes from me every week, at the very bottom of the notes from me, there's a spot that says like, check out my free resources. That library has a full walkthrough of how I like to make decks. So if you're like, oh, this seems like a really cool tool. And then you sign in, you're like, I don't know how to use this tool. That would be a good resource for you as well. And then the last thing I just wanted to mention for you, just so you know, if you're like, oh yeah, I've tried a couple of them every now and then, or you think that this looks like something that would be really useful for you and your students, I wanted to make sure that you know that tomorrow, not today, tomorrow and Wednesday, because tomorrow's Tuesday, if you use the code BTSBONUS21, you can get 25% off of the bundle of all of the boom cards that I have made that are... <laughs> Well, both. All, all, of my, all of my boom cards will be on sale. So I just wanted to let you know that if this is something that you're interested in, if you wanted to just grab a deck to try or if you wanted to grab the whole bundle, remember the bundle is already discounted just because like whenever I put all of those resources together, I always discount them. But tomorrow and Wednesday, when you use the code BTSBONUS21, you'll get an additional 25% off. So here you go. Okay, we got another question. It says, can you change your classroom name without paying? I have no idea. I have never tried to change my classroom name. Sorry. I just kind of link the, <laughs> the way that I use them most frequently with my students is to do the fast plan link. And then I take that link that it generates and I just put it in Google classroom for my students. So that's an option for you. If that's something that, you know, I haven't tried changing my classroom name, I'm sorry. All right, let's see if I can. I'll come back here really quickly. Stop sharing. Ta-da! There we go. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you some ideas of a what they are, what you need. Do you have to pay or not? You don't. And if you have any questions about them, please feel free to drop comments below. I will put the link to that free deck that I was talking about, the Cognates deck, just so that you can grab them. They're, like I said, they're a great sub plan for this time of year. Or if you want to just kind of like play around with them and see how they work, that would be a really good example for you. I'll put that link in the description of this video. And I will put the link to that big bundle in case you want to check it out and see if there's one in there or the whole bundle that you want to grab. But remember, I would not grab it until tomorrow because tomorrow is when that sale is going to happen. So you'll get that extra discount. Another question. Is it possible to check each of the student's answers? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> so as the students are playing, they'll get like a ding or a depending on how they answer. Um, if you have the free account, you will just see like as the students finish, they'll get a little like end screen and students can take a screenshot of that and submit it. And that would be like their total score. If you want the like full super detailed reports that are <laughs> they're, like incredibly detailed, that is a premium um, perk. I don't know what to say that. Um, I do have a blog post that talks about all the reports. So if you want to see like how they work and the kind of information you get and all of that sort of stuff, I can link that blog post for you if you're interested in it. So yes, it auto corrects and self grades. But if you want to see like the super in-depth report, that is a premium feature. So if, I, if you remember how I was talking about like free versus premium, that's just one of those things. <sighs> so hopefully that answered your question. All right. I'm just going to check and see if there are any more questions. If you are watching and you have any other questions, feel free to drop them below and I will do what I can to answer them. I will say that A Boom Learning has their own Instagram um, profile that's super helpful, but their YouTube channel is incredibly helpful, like tons of tutorials and stuff. And they have a, like a help desk FAQ thing on their website, FAQ. <laughs> back <laughs> on their website with a ton of information. So those are kind of like my three go-to areas. If I don't know something, that's where I go. Um, and I do have a Facebook group too, but 
I actually don't find the Facebook group as helpful. So, all right, I'm not seeing any other questions. If you have more questions or you're watching the replay and you think of something, feel free to just drop a comment below. I am here to help you. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day.